Welcome to the video. Don't forget to hit that bell icon for weekly videos on historical figures and stories. If you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. Today's video will be about two of Japan's most famous and legendary warriors. This is a tale of sacrifice, honour and unwavering loyalty. I will be taking you to 12th century Japan and in order to survive, these men would have to master the art of the sword but their mastery of combat and deeds in life would become legendary. This is their story. Yoshisune Minamoto was born in 1159 and was the ninth son of Minamoto no Yoshitomo, the head of the Minamoto clan. Now, the Minamoto clan had royal blood in them. Minamoto was one of the surnames bestowed by the emperors of Japan upon members of the imperial family who were excluded from the line of succession and demoted into ranks of nobility. He was born just before the Heiji Rebellion in 1160, where his father and two oldest brothers were killed. Thus, Yoshisune grew up without a father. Yoshisune would survive the civil war by fleeing to the capital with his mother Tokiwa Gozen, a noblewoman, his half-brother Yoritomo would be banished to the Izu province. However, Yoshisune's mother was captured by Taira no Kiyomori, the same man who had her husband and two oldest sons killed. He was now the head of the most powerful warrior clan in Kyoto. He would show her son Yoshisune and Yoritomo mercy however, but they would never forget what happened to their family. At the age of 10, Yoshisune was placed into the care of the monks at the Kurana Temple in the Heiei Mountains. This is where the birth of one of the most legendary samurai warriors would take place. While he was there, he was taught the art of the sword and strategy by Kichihogen, which literally means priest, the first demon. He was attributed to have founded eight styles of fighting that are considered the inspiration to all swordsmanship in Japan. Yoshisune would train there for years and would soon become the master of the sword through many trials and tribulations. But while Yoshisune was at the temple, he always knew his destiny was not that of a monk and he would plot his plan to escape. Yoshisune had befriended a gold merchant at the temple who said knew his late father well his plan was to escape with the gold merchant, but before leaving, he stole his master, the first demon's book, named the Six Secret Teachings, which was said to be the demon's family heirloom. This book would further give him the secrets to military strategy, as it was written by Jiang Zia, an ancient Chinese general. How it made its way to the Kurama Temple in Japan over a thousand years later, is unknown. Once Yoshisune had escaped from the temple, he would wander the mountains and forests for a time. He would soon, however, find himself in Kyoto, playing the flute that his mother had given him before she was taken away. The other legendary warrior in this story is named Saito Musashibo Benkei, who was said to be born in 1155. His ancestry is completely unknown. Some tales say he was the offspring of a temple god. In any case, nothing is known of his parentage. Benkei chose to join the monastic establishment at a very young age. Benkei was always big, even as a child. Even as a boy, people saw him having the attributes of a demon. He was described as a monster child with wild hair, long teeth, and had a huge stature for a boy of his age. People would even call him Oniwaka, which means demon or ogre child. Growing up, Benkei must have had it rough, but this was only due to his natural gifts, such as his immense size. He would train with a variety of weapons, while at the monasteries, particularly the Naginata, which is the half moon spear. By the age of 17, Benkei was six foot six tall. He was an absolute monster 
compared to the rest of the men in Japan at the time. Now trained in the art of combat, and being the biggest and strongest man most people have ever seen, he left his life behind at the monastery and became a Yamabushi, which can be translated into a mountain hermit, living a simple life, surrounded by nature. However, one day, Benkei realised he had a hatred for samurai warriors, as he thought them to be arrogant and most unworthy of their title. He would go on a personal quest to take a thousand swords from samurai he would defeat in combat. So Benkei would head to Kyoto and would wander the streets every night, finding samurais to fight and would defeat them and take their prized weapons. Benkei would take 999 swords from different swordsmen and one night he would walk around the Gojtenjin shrine looking for one final warrior to defeat. He found a young man playing the flute at the shrine with a gilded sword around his waist. This young man would prove to be Yoshisune. Benki challenged him to a duel and the two would then walk onto the Gojo bridge. Yoshisune and Benkei would stare at each other before circling each other. It was a monster of a man fighting a much smaller warrior, but Yoshisune was trained by priest the first demon and had become a master of strategy due to the book of six secret teachings being in his possession. Yoshisune was able to outclass Benkei in their fight and defeat him, leaving him at his mercy, but spared him. Benkei had just suffered his first loss to a samurai. Benkei was infuriated. How could he lose when he had defeated so many other samurai? He would stalk Yoshisune and one day would seek revenge by waiting for him at the Buddhist temple of Kiyomizu, where he would challenge Yoshisune again. The two once against fought, but Benkei would lose. After the second duel, Benkei remained calm and became very interested in Yoshisune. The two warriors would tell each other their life stories and how they had come to lead the life of the sword. Benkei after this would become Yoshisune's retainer and best friend. And so it came to be that a man of noble birth and a man who came from nothing became friends and allies through the love of combat. In 1180, Yoshisune heard that his half-brother Yoritomo was now the head of the Minamoto clan and had raised an army at the request of Prince Moshito in order to vanquish the Taira clan who had usurped the power of the emperor. Yoshisune had a decision to make to join his brother and avenge his father and fallen brothers or sit out of the upcoming war. He would need revenge just as much as he needed water and he joined his brother Yoritomo and his other brother, Noriori. It must have been very strange, as none of these brothers had ever met before. Yet, revenge and the glory of their family name would bring them together. They would take part in a devastating bloody war, which would change Japan forever. This was known as the Genpei War. Taira no Kiyomori the man who had killed Yoshisune's father, brothers, and who had taken his mother and turned her into a concubine, would get a fever at the start of the war and die, leaving his son, Muneromi, to lead the Taira clan. Betrayals and ambition would get in the way of the Minamoto clan's plans, as Minamoto no Yoshinaka tried to take power from his cousins Yoshisune and Yoritomo, the head of the clan. His goal was to take command of the entire clan. To prove he was serious, he burned the royal Hojuji palace and then kidnapped Emperor Go Shirakawa. However, Yoshisune soon caught up with his cousin and on New Year's Day in 1184, the now general led several horsemen across the Uji River and defeated his cousin's forces. Yoshinaka would then retreat. I would like to thank Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. Blinkist is an app I have been using recently. What Blinkist does is it takes non-fiction books 
and summarises them down into 15 minute reads, and you can also listen to them as an audiobook. That's amazing for me, as I spend a lot of time reading a lot of books regarding different times of history for content and video ideas for the channel. Blinkist has over 5,000 titles in 27 different categories, and with its 15 minute audio explanation, it allows me access to valuable knowledge and great ideas quickly. I can also listen to the books in a lot less time than it would take me to read them, so it's a very efficient way of getting a lot of information regarding the topic I want to learn about. This also allows me to decide if I want to invest the time in reading the whole book, if I want that extra layer of detail. One book that I have been listening to on Blinkist recently is The Twelve Caesars by Suetonius, the Roman historian. This book is a look into the triumphs and tragedies of the Roman Empire's first 12 emperors. Another book I have in my library is the Analex Alphorisms and Anecdotes from the Paragon of Chinese Sages. So these are some of the books that I am interested in that were written thousands of years ago, but there are many more books to read. There is a link to Blinkist in the description box below. It's definitely worth using, and you will get a 7 day free trial and 25% off a premium membership when you sign up through my link. Benkei and Yoshisune would slay every man they came across, and Benkei would fully join Yoshisune's cause. Together, they would fight in many battles to come, and avenge the death of Yoshisune's family, and end the tyranny of the Taira clan. However, Yoshisune would still have to deal with his traitorous power-hungry cousin before dealing with Kiyomori of the Taira clan. Yoshisune's cousin Yoshinaka would make his final stand at the Battle of Awazu. After fleeing his cousin's armies, Yoshinaka was joined by his foster brother, Imei Kanehira, a military commander and famous warrior. During the Battle of Awazu, Yoshinaka and Kanehira would both fight valiantly, holding off enemy forces of thousands of men for a time. Nevertheless, Yoshinaka was struck dead by an arrow, and his foster brother Kanehira, knowing his cause was lost, committed suicide by jumping off his horse and impaling his sword into his mouth. Thus, Benkei, Yoshisune and his brothers could now finally deal with the growing power of the Taira clan, but many battles would lie ahead. On the 20th of March 1184, the Battle of Ichi no Tani would take place. The location of the battle was at Suma. Yoshisune would split his forces into two divisions, while his brother Noriori's force attacked the Taira at the Ikuta Shrine in the woods. Yoshisune would attack at the Ichinotani from the mountain ridge at the north. Then at the chosen hour, more Minamoto forces would attack, causing confusion amongst the enemy Taira clan. Yoshisune and Benkei would fight together and kill together. It is said that they fought back to back and side by side, slaying any Taira warrior that came their way. Not a soul could get past the most powerful warriors of the Minamoto forces. By the end of the battle, the Taira forces would flee, and even though outnumbered, Yoshisune and Benkei were victorious, leaving a thousand enemy men dead on the battlefield. But the Taira clan were not yet vanquished. On March the 22nd, 1185, the Battle of Yashima took place. The Taira clan had retired to their fortress in Yashima, with the Emperor and the three sacred treasures they took earlier in the war. Yoshisune tried to cross the sea with many ships, but they were damaged in a storm. So Yoshisune decided to only depart with five of the 200 ships, carrying 150 men. He then arrived at the palace in the dead of night. The Taira clan were expecting a naval attack, so Yoshisune lit bonfires behind the palace on the island of Shikoku in order to fool the enemy. The plan worked, and the Taira clan thought a huge force was approaching on land. They then abandoned the fortress with the Emperor. The six secret teachings that Yoshisune had stolen from Priest, the first demon, 
were serving him well. Yoshisune knew that victory was in his grasp, and on April the 25th, 1185, he would once again go into battle. The Battle of Dan no Ura was a sea battle that took place near Honshu. The beginning of the battle consisted of long-range archery exchanges and volleys of arrows being fired into enemy ships. However, as the tide changed, the Taira forces tried to surround the Minamoto ships. This led to the Taira warriors and Minamoto warriors boarding each other's ships and the real battle would begin. The Taira, however, had a traitor in their midst. General Tagushi Shigeyoshi defected and attacked his own clan from the rear. He also told the Minamoto forces on which ship they were hiding the six-year-old puppet emperor. It became a complete slaughter. The Taira forces began to lose heart as the Minamoto forces focused their attention on the emperor's boat and killed everyone aboard. Even the child emperor was not spared as the blood rage of the Minamoto could not be calmed. The Taira clan saw that their cause was lost and they began to commit mass suicide. The leader of the Taira clan was killed and any commanders and high-ranking members of the family either died in battle or committed suicide. Yoshisune, Benkei and the Minamoto warriors had just caused the destruction of the Taira clan. The most powerful family in Japan were no more and the quest for revenge and a just Japan was complete. After the Genpei War, the half-brother of Yoshisune Yoritomo became the first Shogun, a title of military dictators, and he would establish his military government in Kamakura. Yoshisune and his friend Benkei were war heroes, and Yoshisune was appointed as the governor of Iyo. However, after all the battles Yoshisune had won for his clan, his brother Yoritomo nullified those decisions. Whether it was from jealousy or suspiciousness that Yoshisune was a better warrior and could lead better, the two brothers would grow bitter. Yoshisune, feeling he was worthy of his titles and feeling betrayed by his brother, allied himself with his uncle Yuki in opposing Yoritomo and his decisions. His brother Yoritomo the Shogun would send out for Yoshisune's head, and Yoshisune fled Kyoto in 1185 with his faithful mistress, Shizuka Gozen, who carried his unborn child. His faithful friend Benkei stayed loyal to him and did not abandon him, even though that meant becoming an outlaw. Yoshisune and Benkei made their way to Hira Uzumi and would seek the protection of Fujiwara no Heidhira, who was the ruler of the Mutsu province in northern Japan. There they lived undisturbed for four years until Heidhira died. His son Yasuhira promised to honor his father's wishes to shelter the two warriors, but fearing the wrath of the shogun, betrayed them and surrounded his own castle with troops. Yoshisune and Benkei had prepared for this day. Knowing this could be their end, Benkei stood guard on the bridge in front of the main gate to protect Yoshisune while he retired to the inner keep. The soldiers knew of Benkei and were afraid to confront him. Some, however, would charge at him and they all met a swift death. It is said that he killed an excess of 300 soldiers who came at him man on man. Knowing that facing the monstrous Benkei would mean certain death, the soldiers decided to fire volleys of arrows at him. After hundreds of arrows had been fired, an arrow-riddled Benkei remained there, standing guard at the main gate. Some soldiers dared to cross the bridge to take a closer look at Benkei who was somehow still standing. But as they approached him, the gigantic man fell to the ground, having died standing upright. This is now known as the Standing Death of Benkei. 
and is one of the most legendary last stands in history. Yoshisune, rather than surrender, killed his own wife and children to prevent them having the dishonour of being captured. He then turned the blade on himself and committed seppuku, a ritualistic form of samurai suicide. Many believed that Yoshisune was loyal to his brother the Shogun to the very end and was just a victim of his suspicious nature and overwhelming ambitions which made him eliminate any possible threat to his leadership, whether real or imaginary. Before Yoshisune killed himself, he wrote this letter to his brother's chief minister. I became the object of the most damning slanders, in consequence of which my great exploits have been ignored. I, Yoshisune, though innocent of all offences, have incurred blame. Though worthy of honour and guilty of no mistake, I have fallen into his lordship's disfavour. My armour and helmet were my pillow. My bow and arrows were my trade. Realising that only through the help of the Buddhas and the gods could I hope that my appeal might succeed, I inscribed oaths on talismans on various temples and shrines, swearing by the gods of the great and small shrines in Japan and by the spirits of the underworld that I have never for a moment harboured any evil ambitions, and all these pledges of loyalty I submit yet, I receive no pardon. After Yoshisune was found dead, his head was preserved in sake and was sent to Yoritomo as proof of his death. However, rumours and legends precede Yoshisune. Legend would have it that as Benkei fought to protect him, he escaped the siege and sailed to the mainland of Asia, resurfacing as Genghis Khan. Another rumour is that after evading death, he fled to Hokkaido and changed his name. However, he probably did die by his own hand. Benkei and Yoshisune would both fight and die together. As outlaws, they met death on their own terms. Ambition, suspicion and jealousy can quickly turn deadly. How could Yoritomo order the death of his own brother Yoshisune after all the battles they had been through? And how do you think Yoshisune died? Did he kill himself? Or did he escape? Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. And I'll see you all next week for another History Profile.